Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast of your favorite team in the Bay Area. On today's episode, the Sharks shut down the Seattle Kraken in their 4 nothing win. And William Eklund has earned the right to be the Sharks' next call-up. So all that and more on today's episode of Locked on Sharks. You're Locked on Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, J.D. Young, contributor at Fear the Fin, RIP, and San Jose Hockey Now. I want to thank you for making Locked On Sharks your first listen for free and available every day on every podcast and of course you can watch on youtube as well um do want to apologize for not having an episode monday morning for you sunday night monday morning i headache that knocked me out of commission for about a good 24 to 36 hours so uh finally starting to feel like myself again so uh don't worry though you still get five episodes this week got plenty of content for you I'm probably going to have a special Patrick Marlowe-centric episode for you on Saturday, uh, especially because it's his retirement jersey. Uh, so maybe something for you to listen to as you're uh, enjoying the festivities and kind of my thoughts on Patrick Marlowe, who was uh, my fa- first favorite Sharks player. So um, before we get into the Sharks 4 to nothing winner of the Kraken and talk about William Eklund, this episode is brought to you guys by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment matter more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. And the Sharks, um, in a very um, low event, let's just say low event <laughs> hockey game, beat the Seattle Kraken 4 to nothing. Um, James Reimer posting the shutout. And going into this game, right, you heard... Timo Meyer was out with an upper body injury. Tomas Hurdle uh, missing the game for personal reasons. It sounds like his wife uh, and Netta was going into labor as they're going to have their second child. Um, really quick, if you think a player missing a game for the birth of a child is bad um, and you think the player should be there, you can just stop listening right now. Um, that is a terrible take. Um, please, Hurdle, go enjoy the birth of your child like that is yes uh, especially i don't even if the team was like had like a you know was was perfect this season and had won like 50 games in a row i don't care um you can there's only so many opportunities to see the birth of your children um compared to playing a hockey game so um hopefully congratulations to the hurdles um soon i think the lebanks are going to be joining them here really quick as well but I digress. Going into this game, though, right, you thought no Timo, no Hurdle. This was going to be bad. Um, and the Sharks, they they did a good job of, of really limiting the Kraken today and what the Kraken like to do, right? The Kraken team are very much high-paced offense. We're going to shoot. We're going to, you know, score a bunch of goals, et cetera, et cetera. And the Sharks really did a good job of slowing them down, Um Maybe this has to do with the 1 p.m. puck drop. Who knows what it is, but the Sharks just for some reason today had uh, the Kraken's number. Um, You know, kind of digging into the numbers of this game, like to start 5-on-5, expected goals for 2.82 to 1.65 in favor of the Sharks. Like, when do you see that? You know, even the first period alone, um, the Kraken had 0.11 expected goals for in the first period. That's uh that's pretty bad. <laughs> the Sharks didn't do much better at 0.38, but like that's that's not what we see from the Sharks kind of shutting it down, shutting a team down, especially a team that is as deep and as talented as the Kraken. They don't have, I mean, Matty Beniers is gonna be that guy one day, but they don't have that like superstar dude. They're they're a very deep team, right? Um, that can roll four lines, they can get depth, they can get scoring from any line on any day, and they just did not have that and you counter that or you, you complement that with a Martin Jones vintage SAP game. And that's how you get a four, nothing win. Um, Martin Jones was abysmal today. Um, the goal that he gave up to Couture was, you know, off <laughs> a face off goal that goes off of Yanni Gord's stick. 
and Ray Powell, like Jones just wasn't even expecting it. Um, just was not Martin Jones's day. I don't know if he was having flashbacks to game one against the Golden Knights um, when he gave up seven. Uh, I don't know what it was, but just, yeah, Martin Jones did not have a good day in San Jose today, and the Sharks benefited from that. So, or, yeah, well, they got worse from it. Who knows? Martin Jones still still screwing over the Sharks uh, to this day. Um, but the Sharks, though, I mean, you look at the lines for today's game, right? You had um, a cobbled together uh, lines for the Sharks, right? Um, Barabanov, Couture, AC Mont was your first line. Noah Gregor, Nick Benito, Martin Kaut, who made his uh, Sharks debut today. Oscar Lindblom, Nico Sturm, Stephen Lorenz uh, line together. You also had um, uh, and then a line of – or Lorenz should not be on – sorry, that was a weird line. Um, sorry, Lindblom, Sturm, and then uh, Kevin LeBanc. The lines are really weird on, on natural stat trick. And then uh, McDonald, <laughs> yes, defenseman uh, McDonald. Uh, we did know when the Sharks traded for him, he did have some versatility to play forward or defenseman. They put him on a forward today. So McDonald, uh, Lawrence, and then Sveshnikov was on the fourth line. Defensive pairings, Harrington, Carlson, Vlasic, Benning, and then Farr Chichek. Uh, James Reimer made his first start in a while, long, long while. Um, I think it had been almost been over three weeks since last time he made his first start. So, um, And he earned a shutout on... Not too much work, but he got the shout out today. So, but the Sharks very cobbled lines together, right? The a lot of guys that aren't playing where they normally play. You, you, you know, Couture, Barapanov, Acemont has been the Sharks' second line, having to kind of propel to the first line when you lose a hurdle and you lose a Meyer for the day. Um, and then kind of Nick Benito having to slide to two C right now. We know Benito's not really fit for being a center anymore. Uh, but he, you know, played two seats today with, with Cout and, um, you know, we'll get into how those guys performed here in a little bit, but, you know, and, and Noah Gregor, like the Sharks, they, they did a good job. They're, they're kind of, their key to victory today was just kind of limiting the Kraken from doing what the Kraken do best. So um, before we get into the lines and talk about kind of how these guys performed and all that fun stuff, um, let's take a quick break. Um, talk to you guys about our friends over at Athletic Greens. Um, if you guys don't know by now, Athletic Greens, good way to get your gut health, get more energy, you want to optimize your immune system, but you don't want to take a bunch of vitamins or pills. You want a supplement that actually tastes great. My wife's been taking it. Uh, she's been doing this for about two months now. It's really helped get her kind of gut health in, in check with something that she's struggled with for a long time. What is it? It's one scoop of the delicious AG1 in a cup of water. Shake it up. You drink it before you have your morning coffee and you're good to go. You get 75 high quality uh, vitamins, minerals, whole food, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and aptogens to help you start your day right. Special blend and supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, aging, all those things. And great thing about it, less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. Go cheaper than going to the store and buying all the vitamins and all the supplements um, yourself. Investing you know, all in one nutritional insurance, and it's lifestyle friendly. So if you're keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free, gluten free, contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial or anything, and still tastes good. To me, it has a little bit of a dark chocolate kind of aftertaste. So pretty good. And right now, Athletic Greens is making it really easy for you to get a free one-year supply of their immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health, pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, um, let's get into some of the lines. And ever since the the, the Bear Band of Couture AC Mont line, which was your one, uh, your first line. They were outstanding today, and that line has really found some chemistry together. Um, natural stat trick, their, num their numbers are really, really weird right now because of I don't think they knew what to do with McDonald. Um, so we really only have a couple lines that we can really kind of talk about. Um, but at least when it comes to the actual, like, the nitty-gritty set. So, um, but the Bear Banoff Couture AC Mont line, 1304 time on ice. 
Um, 14 shot attempts, nine allowed. Actual shots was eight to four. Goals for they had two goals, the Couture goal, and then the AC Mont goal of him kind of crashing the net as great pass from Carlson. Even better pass from Couture. Um, that line was had expected goals for 1.06 and 12 scoring chances gave up four, five high, high danger chances gave up one, seven offensive zone, four neutral zone. Gregor Benino Kaut, um, 834 time on ice, five shot attempts gave up 12, um, three shots gave up actual five. Um, expected goals for was 0.26 and they gave up like 0.29. So they, while they kind of got outshot, um, they were kind of giving up low, lower quality chances, right? Um, they only had three. They had three scoring chances, gave up five, and they had one high danger while gave up none as for that line. So, um, don't really have the other lines because again, I don't think um, natural stat trick knew what to do with McDonald playing uh, forward. I'm sure in their system, he's a defenseman, and it screws up with all the the numbers. But um, I thought Cout, though, I, th- I thought he looked pretty solid. You could definitely see the wheels. Um, I'd like to see him not with Nick Benino as his center. Um, I think after the trade deadline, assuming Timo Meyer is traded um, and the Sharks start to call some guys up, I would love to see a Eklund hurdle Cout line. I think that line would be really, really fun. Um, you saw Martin Cout, his, his speed and his wheels um, definitely would add something to a hurdle who's not known for his his sweet his speed right having hurdle kind of have two young guys who can kind of get up and down the ice and he can kind of play more of a facilitator role which he's done all season with uh with Timo Meyer I think that line right there would kind of, would be really fun and would generate a lot of a lot of entertainment and some good offense going forward but you know and Noah Gregor finally Finally scored. It felt like it was going to be another Noah Gregor game as he hit coming out of goes to the box for tripping. I believe it's a tripping. Comes out. Couture finds great pass from Couture. Couture had a game today. Had himself a pretty solid game today. Um, finds him wide open, breakaway. And what does Noah Gregor do? He hits the post because that's what Noah Gregor does. But he went out, totally redeemed himself um, with a great, great, great goal. Uh, where he just beat Martin Jones. And again, I don't know. Martin Jones did not have a good day today. Uh, <laughs> I, I talked about the first segment. Martin Jones didn't have a good day today. But, you know, Noah Gregor, if I've said plenty of things about Noah Gregor on this podcast, but um, also sympathetic to Noah Gregor. And yeah, he he needed that goal, deserved that goal. Um, you know, hopefully, hopefully we see, like we did last year, right, where we – Gregor kind of around this time last year was going to the same things. And then all of a sudden the kind of the floodgates open. So um, if Noah Gregor could ever finish, uh, figure out how to actually score um, and finish, watch out. That guy would be really, really good. But um, at, at this point, I think we know who Noah Gregor is, but he scored a nice goal today. Um, good for him. So yeah. Um, other guys, like I said, Logan Gator, I thought had a, a great game today, especially playing that one C role right now. And, I think if Couture is your 2C, you're feeling good. And if Couture is your 3C, you're feeling amazing. Um, but Couture kind of reached back and, and you know, today reached back into the old, uh, you know, went back in time a little bit. And I thought he was great. And that line, it, like I said earlier, that line of AC Montbert Ben off Couture has been outstanding. Um, he talked about in the post game press conference where he said, you know, it's it's a good mix between those guys because Bear Benoff, we know Bear Benoff's transition. He's a you know puck carrying monster. Brings the the puck into his own into the offensive zone um, very successfully a lot of times. You know have AC Mott who can kind of be that guy on the edge who's going to kind of forecheck and forecheck and forecheck and play right there on the edge and kind of get into the guy's skin. But I mean you see AC Mott his forechecking ability compared and then you partner that with Barabanov's you know his ability to control the puck and to you know find those sweet sweet passes. And then Couture kind of is being whatever is, is needed on that. If he needs to kind of drive to the net, boom, he can do that. Or if he needs to pass, his AC Mont is crashing, like we saw in the AC Mont goal late in the third period, so everyone can enjoy their tacos. You can see that too. And I think this line right now, it's working really well. It'll be really interesting to see what Mikey AC Mont um, 
kind of commands in the offseason. You wonder if they might, the Sharks kind of go with the Barabanov type of, of thing again, right? Where, right, Barabanov came in, played for the Sharks, uh, you know, the nine game sample size, right? And, and was very good during that time. And they gave him a one year, $1 million kind of prove it deal. Hey, let's see what what you could do, and then what happened, right? Barrett Banoff uh, earned a two year, two point five million dollar AAV, so two year, two years, five million dollar contract um, for him. AC Mont is an RFA, so the Sharks, you know, hold his rights. You don't have to worry about Mikey AC Mont going anywhere. So if you want to order your, let's say they trade him, but um, I think, you, I mean, it, it's found money, right? You found something in Mikey AC Mont, and if the Sharks. I'd be surprised if the Sharks traded him at the trade deadline. Um, I think he kind of fits in what the Sharks are doing right now. And again, he was literally on waiver wires a couple of weeks ago. But if you're the Sharks, do you, you know, I think you give him a kind of the same thing, right? Do you, you follow the bear ban off path? Give him a one year, $1 million deal, kind of see where that goes. Um, and then you can either trade him next season, right? Uh, if he continues to grow and develop the way he's, doing or you give him another a deal just like the bear band of you know a two years 2.5 million something like that you know two years keep sh- short right short we don't want to we don't lock up a lot of money right now but um i think that that's the way to go for a guy again you found him it's found money um he's 26 he'll be 27 at the start of next season i think you, i think you just look at bear band his line mate and kind of follow that same this is this is the the way to go type of situation here. So, um, James Reimer, like I said, did it. He wasn't asked to do too too much this game, but he did what what he was asked for. So, um, good to excuse me, good to see him have a good game, especially after not playing for basically the last three weeks. Right, his last game was end of January. Um, 26 shots, 26 saves. Expected goals against was 1.95. Only had to make four high danger saves. Had nine medium danger and nine low danger. So, again, the Sharks did a great job of making life easy for Reimer by limiting the high danger saves for him. Um, And he responded in in kind. So, I'd love to see that. Hopefully, we can kind of get Reimer, get Reimer, Capo, Kakinen going here. I still, I really, really enjoy the way Capo, Kakinen has played. Um... I thought he played pretty well against the Sabres, except for that first goal. Uh, he definitely wants that one back. But I think Capo Kakinen has earned the right to kind of be the number one goalie for the Sharks, going at least until the end of the season. Um, and then hopefully Reimer kind of rebuild a little bit of, or at least kind of prove that he's healthy now. Get a nice little trade asset out of him going into the deadline. So before we finish up and talk about one William Eklund and his weekend, um, and why he needs to be the next call up for the Sharks. Do want to let you guys know about our friends over at uh, FanDuel. If you guys don't know by now, FanDuel is the number one sports book in America. And we just passed the uh, midway point of the NBA season, right? You just had the all star break, you just had the trade deadline. Now we're starting the playoff push for all these teams. And it's the perfect time to download FanDuel because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet does not win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point score to threes drained. Um, I enjoy the two by three, two three pointers scored in the first three minutes. Um, it's just super fun. You root for like, you're just rooting for points and rooting for points is always fun. So um, then, you know, right away, if you won or lost, you don't have to wait the entire game to find out if you won or lost. You want, you know, in the first three minutes. So plus FanDuel make, uh, even lets you combine your bets for a bigger payout with a same game parlay. So don't make, uh, don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet on $1,000 in bonus bets. When you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports uh, betting partner of the NBA. William Eklund. He's ready. He is ready. Barracuda, excellent weekend in Abbotsford. Um, Won Saturday night. Came back, won that game. You know, four to three game. They uh, had to hold on there, but they, they won that game. And then on Monday, a beatdown of Abbotsford, 7-2, to two, and you saw the offense was clicking on all cylinders. Uh, Eklund 
two goals, two assists in that game. Uh, his first career, uh, first pro four point game. He's ready, guys. He is ready. And I think, I think, I think he would have been a call up. So if the Sharks had known, like, for they they knew they were probably going to have LeBanc or and or Meyer out for Monday's game. That's why Martin Kaut, uh he was called up on Saturday or on Sunday. Got in Sunday night, was ready to play on Monday, right? They didn't know about Hurdle until Monday morning. That's why there wasn't a call up available because the shark or the Barracuda were up in Abbotsford. Um, so I think though, Equin has earned Equin has earned his 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 opportunity to play some NHL games. Um, like he, <laughs> I. I He's he's so good. Like you, you could see the beginning of the season of him working on his skills, right? Working on his penalty kill, working on his power play, working on like his five on five. You can see he's built up his strength. You know, I talked to uh, to half wall hockey a couple weeks ago. We talked about Eklund and how just how much his games improved, and now the points are coming. Um, power play, even strength, it doesn't matter. Goals, you know, he had a goal and a breakaway and then a goal and a power play um, against Abbotsford on Monday. Uh, like against Spencer Martin, who has been an NHL goalie. It's not like he's playing some scrub goalie. And I know Spencer Martin has not had the best year, but he's still been an NHL goalie and he's played a bunch of NHL games. Um, this this is what we've been waiting for. And I know there's the let him keep developing, let him keep developing. Like at some point you need to test, right? You need to see. Okay, what have I learned? <laughs> am I ready? Am I ready for that next step? And I, I think, I think he's ready. Uh, like, again, he's been doing everything that you've asked for him. He's tied in AHL points for a rookie right now. Um, he has forty-one points this year. Again, as a rookie, tied among AHL. Um, I'm pulling up the thing right now. Tied amongst AHL players for rookies, 41. Sammy Walker, the Iowa Wild. Ethan Frank, like, so he's tied with Sammy Walker for first. Um, you know, like, you, at some point you have to kind of see what you have there. And even if you don't want to look at rookies, he's still, like, 25th. Um, pulling it up right now. Yep, he is, sorry, 29th. He's tied for 27th. Just among everybody. It's not like the Barracuda score a ton of goals. So, you know, they're they're a team fighting for their playoff spots right now. Um, yeah, he's ready. Again, it doesn't mean he has to stay up the rest of the year. You have a conversation. You, spe- you set the expectation. I think Mike Greer has been that, about that, right? We want you to develop. We want you to be over-ripen, right? Let's see. Let's see. I think he's ripe. I think he's ready to go. You have a conversation. He's going to end the season on the Barracuda too because the Barracuda are going to be playing playoff games and they want him to play playoff games and play playoff hockey, meaningful playoff hockey while the Sharks are going to be floundering. Um, again, you, I think he's ready. You have to at least give him a shot, especially if you're going to be losing Timo Meyer. Um, you're going to be losing, you know, Nick Benita's probably going to be gone, whatever, whoever. Yeah, you got to see what you have and see what he has learned from the nine games last year to now. And I, I think putting him on the line, like I suggested earlier, Hurdle, Martin Kaut, and and Eklund. I Hurdle Hurdle can can be the dad on that line. Um Martin Kaut, he's played NHL game, you know, Martin Kaut's played NHL games before. Let let those guys that those are that's gonna be your kind of your future right there. Let them kind of go figure it out. So um yeah, if you still think Eklund needs to keep playing in the AHL, again, it's not like he can't go back and play in the AHL. He's going to go back and play in the AHL this year at some point. Right? Even if the Sharks keep up, he's going to go back and play. Uh, whenever the Barracuda, if the Barracuda make the playoffs or if they need to make a playoff push, he's going to go back and play uh, games with them because they want him to play that. But now is the perfect time around the trade deadline. Let him get up. Let him get a taste of it. See see what he the skills that he's learned see how they translate and see that way next year he can hit the ground running. So yes, William Eklund needs to be playing 
games in the NHL this season. So um, that's going to do it for me. Um, be back tomorrow. So we have a draft profile. I have uh, Daniel Gee on. We did, uh, who do we do? Um, I did, I recorded last week. So we had a uh, draft profile um, coming up tomorrow. Then we have a Strauss man interview coming up uh, for you guys. Uh, was that Wednesday or Thursday? Um, probably went Thursday, Wednesday night, Thursday for you guys. Uh, then we're going to talk about the Sharks game on Thursday. That'll be Friday's episode. And on Saturday, going to be a special kind of Patrick Marlowe centric podcast. I'm going to talk about kind of Marlowe, what he means to me as a Sharks fan, what he means, I think, to Sharks, um, to the Sharks fan base, of course. And, you know, just kind of how special that he's the one who's going to be the, the first player to have his jersey retired. So, um, so, so keep an eye out for that on Saturday. Friday night, Saturday. So, um, so that's going to do it for me. Be back tomorrow. Um, make sure you follow me on Twitter at my fry hole. You can follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at locked on sharks. Um, listen, wherever you get podcasts, Apple, Spotify, Amazon music, watch on YouTube as well. Thank you guys for watching locked on sharks, your team every day till tomorrow. Bye friends.